Hi everyone, these are your notes for the nitrogen and phosphorus cycle. We're going to focus heavily on the nitrogen cycle as that is a little bit more complicated than the phosphorus cycle, so let's get started. In the nitrogen cycle, the first thing that you need to understand is that nitrogen, which is N2, is diatomic, um, and it's got triple bonds, so it is very, very, it's a very, very strong bond. Because of this nitrogen, which is a gas in the atmosphere, we talked about this back in unit two, um, is unusable. Organisms need nitrogen. They're going to make DNA. They're going to make proteins. And um, because it is unusable, it's uh, in limited supply, even though 78% of our atmosphere is made of that nitrogen. So we're going to have to take this nitrogen as a gas, and we're going to have to convert it into um, a solid and, and make it available for organisms. So there are two ways that this can happen. With the nitrogen, um, the process of taking it away from the atmosphere and no longer a gas is called nitrogen fixation. When that happens, we're going to convert the, the gas nitrogen to um, an organic form of nitrogen, um, and we're going to convert it into ammonia. This process of nitrogen fix fixation can take or can happen one of two ways. If it's abiotic, that form is going to be lightning. So lightning has the energy to break the bonds in that nitrogen. If it's done by um, biotically, then this is going to be done by bacteria, and there are several types of bacteria that can form a symbiotic relationship with certain types of plants um, called legumes. The, the legumes include clover, peanuts is a very um, well-known example of legumes. They're not nuts. They're in the roots of plants and, and they have that symbiotic relationship with the bacteria um, that can help remove that nitrogen from the atmosphere. So nitrogen fixation is the process by which atmospheric nitrogen, which is unusable, is now in a liquid form. However, what you guys do need to know is that this is still not usable by plants. Okay, so this ammonia is actually toxic. Um, and so what's going to happen is we're going to take this ammonia and we are going to convert it into a different form. And this is also can be done by bacteria. Many textbooks will call this process ammonification. So that ammonia is going to form a compound called ammonium. And now we're starting to get something usable by plants. Um, and so the way that I tell students to help them remember is think of, is this ammonium? It sounds like yum. Although plants would prefer not to use this form of nitrogen, uh, it is still usable but there are more desirable forms of nitrogen that we can do or we can use. So we're going to take this ammonium and we're going to convert it into other products, products that are done or um, are, are used heavily by plants. So they are going to be your nitrites. And your nitrates. And this process of converting ammonium into nitrites um, or even your nitrates, this is called nitrification. Now this right here is number one, it's water soluble. 
Uh, your nitrites are NO2 minus, so the minus means that it's, it's got a charge, it can dissolve in water, or NO3, also charged, which means it's soluble in water. But this is the form that is going to get used by uh, plants the most. So we're gonna, it's gonna get abused by plants who absorb it through their roots. Okay, and since it is water soluble, it can also, um, in heavily leached soils, like what we talked about with the tropical rainforests, it can end up as a uh, runoff. If there's too much water, it ends up in um, aquatic systems. Nitrites and nitrates can also, um, if organisms die, um, they can decompose into the nitrites, nitrates. Um, other bacteria will come in and convert nitrates, nitrites back to ammonium. Um, and so this is not just, even though we're drawing, drawing it as a, as a circle, please understand that a lot of times bacteria can skip steps and go back and forth. Excess nitrites and nitrites can also be converted back into ammonia or uh, into unusable uh, ni uh, atmospheric nitrogen. This process is called denitrification. Again, done by bacteria. And so they'll take those nitrites and those nitrates, break it down, use them for making proteins, making DNA, and they can convert it back into the atmospheric form. So what I'm going to do real quick is just kind of go through, again, um, the process. You've got your, nitri your, your nitrogen, which is unusable in the atmosphere, can get broken into uh, or get converted into ammonia, and that process is nitrification. Now, ammonia is still not usable by plants. However, other bacteria can convert it into something called ammonium, which is usable, although not preferred, um, and then ammonium can get converted through a process called nitrification to nitrites and nitrates. These are usable, um, and so those are the substrates of this pathway. The processes involved give you a hint as to the name. We have nitrogen fixation, which will convert nitrogen to ammonia, either abiotically or biotically. Ammonification is the conversion of ammonia to ammonium, and then ammonium into nitrates or nitrites is called nitrification, and then your nitrites and nitrates converting back into atmospheric gas is called denitrification. And instead, um, you, uh, it, there are some times when these can um, bypass over here, just depending on the organisms involved. You definitely want to make a note, though, of which ones are usable, um, and that is, we'll just put little stars by them, ammonium, although they would, not prefer, they would prefer to use something else. Um, they would prefer these ones right here, usable by plants. And again, plants will absorb it through their roots, um, and any excess nitrogen in the area can either be converted back into nitrogen gas, or if there is water and runoff, it'll get leached into aquatic systems. Thanks for watching. I hope this helped.